For those who migrate to big cities, they will usually find problems related to the high cost of renting a house or apartment. Maybe some people still have the opportunity to live in a boarding house, which is relatively cheap. But not a few, for reasons such as having a family or others. They need to rent a house or apartment. The problem is, sometimes even rent is not cheap, especially for the location of a house or apartment that is very strategic. Those of you who have ever looked for apartments or houses for rent must know. However, sometimes if you are lucky or unlucky, you may find a house or apartment that is much cheaper than the surrounding area. Of course, the lower price is not without any minuses. This time I will tell a story about a haunted house in West Area. This incident happened to one of my acquaintances. He had just started his new restaurant business. For the start, he rented a house that was not far from the mall where his business was located. Well, the house is much cheaper than the surrounding houses. Without suspicion, he rented the house. This house was planned to be a kitchen, and also a place for the chef to live, because there was no kitchen in the mall. So, every day, the food will be cooked there, and then delivered to the mall. In the mall, it is just heated up. Occasionally, my friend visited his chef to see the progress of his cooking test. While trying to cook, the chef also told me that he had experienced some supernatural events in this house several times. Curious, my friend asked, what happened? Once when the chef was busy experimenting and cooking, he felt like someone was watching him. As a piece of information, the only person living in the house was the chef himself. There was no one else. So, on the night when he was experimenting, at first, he only felt like he was being watched. He ignored the feeling and continued to focus on cooking. But over time, suddenly, someone stood next to the chef, busy staring at what the chef was cooking. Once again, it is reminded that there was no one living in the house besides the chef alone. And it was already night. There was no one else. So, the one who stood on his right was unknown. The chef was brave. He didn't ignore the one on his right and continued to cook. And eventually, the figure on the right also left eventually. There was one more time the chef was sleeping. And when he was sleeping, there was someone squatting near his feet, as if looking curiously why there was someone here. My friend felt goosebumps when he heard it, but the chef was just relaxed. Later, my friend, when he visited his rental house, was also asked by a neighbor. If you can tell me how much the rent of the house is, asked the curious neighbor. My friend then mentioned the number. The neighbor just smiled. No wonder it's rented so cheaply. You must know that the house is occupied, the neighbor said. My friend, who was listening to this, just smiled. The origin of why the house could be haunted, and so on, is also not well known. And if, from hearing the chef's story, we can also catch that the ghost in the house is not bothering anyone. He was just curious, so he observed it. Only, people who are not strong-willed will certainly not be able to live in a house like this. However because the chef is brave. Plus, living there does not need to pay rent. Rent is paid for by my friend. That's why he also has no problem living there. How about you? Would you like to live in a haunted house, even though the price is a bit cheaper than the surrounding area? <laughs> who was nine years old at the time, had just discovered something. 
if he quietly sneaked into the kitchen to grab some food from the fridge, no one would notice. So that night, he decided to sneak down to the ground floor kitchen. He remembered there was leftover meat from a restaurant in the kitchen. After ensuring everyone was asleep, he stealthily crept downstairs. Sneaking down without being noticed was quite a challenge, especially in the pitch dark house. Finally, after a very long stealthy journey, he reached the kitchen. However, what he found there was horrifying. Behind the small lights of the microwave, he saw a man. A skinny, gaunt man was eating the leftovers. This man was unaware of Grady's presence. Being just a nine-year-old boy, he felt an overwhelming fear. How could there be someone inside his own house? Very cautiously, he crept back upstairs to wake his parents. Unfortunately, his parents were too noisy, and by the time they came down, the kitchen was empty. They said he read too many comics. But one thing was certain. He didn't eat the leftover food on the kitchen table. Since that incident, he started remembering the positions of items in the kitchen. Indeed, sometimes items seemed to move. For example, a glass in the sink that wasn't there the previous night, or a cloth that had changed its position. Since his room had no lock, he took a small knife for protection, placing it under his pillow. One night in August, while reading a book and looking at the ceiling, he noticed a pair of eyes watching him. He screamed immediately. But when his family checked the ceiling, there was nothing there. His family began to doubt him even more. Until the end of August of the same year, one day, something that looked like rice fell from the ceiling into his room. Upon closer inspection, it turned out to be maggots. Perhaps some animal got trapped in the ceiling and died, leading to a maggot infestation. The ceiling was examined again. This time, they found a body up there. It was the same man Grady had seen in the kitchen. Since their house was old, this mysterious man had secretly been living there. Until he was buried, the identity of this man remained unknown. <laughs> this story took place in Korea around 2004, in the Mapo district of Seoul. It begins with a young mother living in an apartment in Mapo. Her husband worked in an office, and their daughter was still very young. That's why she decided to stay home full time to take care of her child. Usually, her husband would leave for work early in the morning. One day, she and her daughter returned home after running some errands. They were waiting for the elevator in the lobby. When the elevator doors opened, there was already a man inside. The woman pressed the button for her floor. She felt uneasy with the man sharing the elevator with her. Why? He never lifted his head. His eyes were always focused on the elevator floor. He wore a mask and held an item wrapped in newspaper. Strangely, he was wearing a yellow raincoat. Floor by floor, the elevator slowly ascended. Then the woman noticed something else. No other floor buttons were lit inside the elevator, only the one she had pressed. So the mysterious man hadn't pressed any floor buttons. Another odd thing was the weather. It was bright and not raining at all. Why was he wearing a raincoat? Feeling extremely frightened, the woman quickly took out her phone and pretended to call her husband. She spoke as if she was in the elevator, asking him to be ready to open the door when she arrived, even though he was still at his office. When the elevator reached her floor, holding her daughter, the woman hurriedly exited and headed to her apartment. 
the man in the yellow raincoat followed closely behind her. Once inside the apartment building, she urgently knocked on her apartment door, shouting, I'm at the door. Open it quickly. Seeing this, the mysterious man turned around and headed back toward the elevator. While the woman tried to enter the correct keypad code to unlock her door, common in South Korean apartments, the trembling of her fingers caused her to make mistakes. An incorrect entry produced a distinctive beep, signaling a wrong code. She realized something else. She hadn't heard the elevator door close. True enough, the man in the raincoat returned. He must have known no one was inside the apartment at that moment. He sprinted towards her. The woman screamed in terror. She quickly punched in the correct code and rushed inside just as the criminal reached her door. With all her strength, she slammed the door shut before he could catch it. She quickly locked the bolt and peeked through the door's peephole. The man was holding a kitchen knife. After standing still for a moment, he slowly walked back to the elevator. After the incident, not long after, in July of the same year, the young mother saw news about a serial killer named Yu Young Chul being arrested. He confessed to killing 20 people. On the day of his arrest, as he was led to the police station, he was wearing a yellow raincoat. Back when I was about five years old and still in kindergarten, my late grandfather was in the hospital due to his illness. I wasn't exactly sure what illness my grandfather had because I was very young at the time and I've never asked my parents about it until now. Back to the story. That night, the clock showed it was 10 p.m., and I was home alone with my mother because my father and grandmother were at the hospital taking care of my grandfather. It was raining heavily that night, so much so that even though my mother had closed the windows, one of them remained slightly open. I slept beside my mother, who had already fallen asleep. I stared at the ceiling, occasionally lost in childlike imaginings, until I heard a faint voice. The voice was indistinct, hoarse, and heavy, but barely audible. The entity said, your grandfather will pass away soon. That's what the mysterious voice uttered. Instantly, I was terrified and hugged my mother tightly. The next morning, I told my mother about it, but she just nodded. Of course, how could she believe a child's words? Around 1 p.m., my mother received news that my grandfather had passed away. At that moment, she looked at me in astonishment. Did you really hear such a voice last night? She asked, and I nodded, puzzled. My mother then informed me that my grandfather had indeed passed away. How could that be? <laughs> this incident took place about 10 years ago, experienced firsthand by my younger brother and me. It's not a story we heard from friends or anyone else. At that time, our house happened to be next to a household of Chinese descent. You know, sometimes during certain occasions, Chinese people have ceremonies where they burn paper offerings. Typically, they place a specially colored red bin for burning the paper. So, after dinner, my younger brother and I went out to play ball. I was eight years old at the time, and he was six. We kicked the ball around in front of our house. The neighborhood was quite deserted then. Not far from where we played was the Chinese paper burning bin, similar to the one shown in the picture. At that moment, there was no fire and no one was around. Our positions were set. My brother and I were facing each other 
with the red bin behind him. He kicked the ball towards me, and I kicked it back in his direction, and so on. Then, as the ball rolled toward me, I kicked it quite hard. Unfortunately, my brother missed catching it. As a result, the ball rapidly headed towards the paper-burning bin. Immediately, I shut my eyes, too scared to watch. I was convinced that with the speed at which the ball was moving, it would surely hit the bin. If the bin didn't topple over, it would at least make a loud noise. I was terrified of getting scolded by our parents and disrespecting someone's religion. One second, two seconds passed, but I didn't hear any sound as I had feared. Slowly, I peeked through my fingers and saw the ball rolling towards my brother. I was puzzled, watching the ball roll towards my brother's feet. I looked at him, and he stared at the ball in disbelief. He bent down to pick it up, and both of us immediately rushed back home. We never dared to tell our parents about the incident, fearing their scolding. But one thing that remains a mystery. How did the ball suddenly roll toward my brother without bouncing off the bin or anything else? Fortunately, nothing else happened after that. Neither my brother nor I fell ill or anything of the sort. Ah, ha, ha, ha. That's absolutely right, I exclaimed joyfully. I was on the phone with my friend, Pia. We started our call around 11 at night. Glancing at the wall clock in my rented room, it was already past one. Sometimes, gossiping with a friend is so enjoyable that time slips away. I remembered my morning class for the next day. Pi, let's wrap it up. I have a morning class tomorrow, and it's taught by Mr. Yos. If I'm late, I'm doomed, I said. Pia agreed, as if understanding how strict my lecturer would be the next morning. All right, bye-bye, Pia. My pillow is already calling me to sleep, I joked. Pia laughed. Be careful with your words, she teased. After saying goodbye several times, the call finally ended. I lay down on my bed, pulling the blanket up to my chest. I picked up my phone, wanting to play a bit with this flat object before sleepiness took over. Snuggling under the blanket, I hugged the soft roll pillow that had been my companion since I moved into this rented room. Slowly, I closed my eyes, beginning to drift into the realm of my subconscious dreams. Huh? What's that smell? I sniffed, detecting a strong scent of pandan permeating my room. Since when was there pandan in my room? Reluctantly, I opened my eyes. The smell was so pungent. It made it hard to breathe. I sat up, feeling groggy, intending to get some water. One sip. Two sips. After the fourth gulp, I placed the glass down. I returned to bed, attempting to sleep again. The smell of pandan intensified, as if it were right beside me. I covered my nose with my pillow, thinking positively that the scent was from some civet cat on the roof. Tomorrow, I'd have to ask Patrick to check it out. But even with my fragrant pillow, I couldn't overpower this unpleasant odor. I sighed in frustration, finding it hard to sleep. It's so overpowering. It makes me nauseous, I grumbled. How many civet cats are there? One? Two? Why is it so strong? Just as I was about to close my eyes again, a chill ran down my spine. My thoughts grew chaotic. Stay positive, Dira. Stay positive. A cold breeze grazed my neck. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, I felt something watching me from afar. I tried to shrug it off, covering myself entirely with the blanket. I felt as if I wanted to vanish when my blanket was forcefully pulled away, revealing a tall figure resembling a roll pillow. It had a wide, terrifying smile, revealing hollow eyes, a bloody, 
festering face with maggots everywhere. The figure grinned so widely, as if tearing its own face apart. I was certain I blacked out after it uttered words I'd never forget. I've been waiting for you. We're going out, aren't we? 